I'm Staff Sergeant Becky McLaughlin, and this beautiful brass instrument is a French horn. As a brass player, I also buzz my lips into a mouthpiece. And the French horn uses the smallest mouthpiece in the brass family. Your school may use single horns, which have three rotor valves and one row of tuning slides. The horn I play is called a double horn, like you would see in orchestras and bands. It has three valves, a thumb valve or a trigger, and two sets of tuning slides. This gives me a huge range of pitches. Your right hand goes into the bell of the horn and it normally stays in the same spot. But if you close it up into the bell, you can make the horn sound muted or stopped. I love the French horn for its versatility. You've heard it play big, powerful fanfares. Warm, rich melodies like this one from Jurassic Park. and other great melodies like this one. And that is the French horn. Hello, I'm Chief Musician Jason Ayub of the United States Navy Band, and I'm here to tell you why I Love the French horn. Now, when I was a kid, I loved going to symphony orchestra concerts so that I could look at all the different instruments. But the one that really caught my eye was the shiny, big belled, crazy tubed French horn. But the other thing that caught my ear about the French horn was its wonderful, glorious sound. Like when I listen to Princess Leia's theme or the beginning of Star Wars or the Avengers. Now, I bet you didn't know this, but the first horns weren't even made out of metal at all. In fact, they were made out of animal horns or seashells, like this giant conch shell that I have here from Hawaii. Take a listen to this. <laughs> That's a beautiful sound, right? Instruments like that shell and early French horns would have been used as a signaling device. Now, another reason I love the horn is it has such an expansive range. In fact, it has a four and a half octave range. Take a listen to this. Also, one of the very unique things that the French horn has is a sound called stopped horn. That's where I take my hand in the bell and I close it off completely and I get a very distinct sound. As I said earlier, I truly love the expressive sound the horn can make. Here is the mysteriously beautiful Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter. Now I'm gonna play for you one of my favorite themes from one of the band pieces we play here at the Navy Band. It's called American Overture. I'm always reminded of the Wild West and Cowboys when I play that. 
Now this last one is one of the ones I mentioned earlier that really inspired me to play the French horn. I think you'll recognize it. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Hello, my name's Katie, and I'm one of the two principal horns of the Philharmonia Orchestra. So I'm going to talk to you about the French horn. It's in the brass group um, of orchestral instruments. Um, it sits on the right-hand side, slightly away, because we're slightly special. We're slightly special for a couple of reasons. I mean, fundamentally, it's the same, because you make <laughs> that bit of weird buzzing sound with your lips. We vibrate our lips to create the sound. That vibration then hits the mouthpiece, and then travels through the horn like that. So <laughs> goes from an ugly sound to... Now, the horn is quite special um, in that, firstly, it's played with the left hand, so the right hand. That is because a while back, before the valves were invented a couple of hundred years ago, we used to change the note with our hand. So, like this. That doesn't really give you an even tone, so they added some valves so we can get all the notes without having that fuzzy sound. Another difference is that it's conical, um, so it starts smaller here and winds around and eventually gradually gets bigger until you get to the bell. Um, so that's why it's slightly different to other brass instruments. It's great fun to play. One of the things I love most about the French horn is the variety you get. So in an orchestral situation you can play some beautiful, beautiful quiet tunes, kind of creeping melodies, very haunting, very romantic, but also you can get some really exciting moments when the horns come blasting and you get a bells up bit and it just creates that little bit of extra added excitement. On a normal French horn, there are two sides, an F side and a B flat side. You change these sides by using this valve, thumb valve here, like that. Now that changes the airflow. It all starts going in there and coming out there, but in between it's all rather complicated. So there are yeah, two sides I was talking about, the F side and the B flat side. The F side is tubing of 12 feet long, and that's the top level. So when you have two layers here, the longer ones are the F side and the shorter ones are the B flat side. Now you can yeah, change your mind which one you want by that. And also, depending on which valve you press, air goes down different tubes here. So you press the first valve, goes round here, through here, and then first slide second, goes round here, then through here, third, round there, and all through this one, the longest one, or any combination of all or both. Before valves were invented, you couldn't play chromatically. You could just play the harmonic series, which the horn and any brass instrument is based on, or you could play with your hand slightly, getting a couple of notes in between, but now we have the valves we can play chromatically from the very bottom to the very top of our register. The role of the French horn player has changed over the years quite a lot. When we used to only be able to play the harmonic series, we just used to be the kind of filling in the middle or the tonic and dominant that kind of thing, rather boring, in between the notes. Then gradually as we got to be, well firstly better with our right hand and as our valves came up we got the tunes and the kind of melodic beautiful side of the horn started to shine through. Gustav Mahler was one of the best horn writers in his time and actually maybe of all horn writing ever. He had some beautiful loud tunes but also some beautiful quiet ones and this is one of the more uh, melodic pretty ones. So in the same symphony, Mahler also wrote some rather loud bits of the horn, and this is a tutti, so there's quite a lot of us playing it, so imagine this times about a million. <laughs> To produce a clear start to the note, we quite often tongue them, so we get we use our tongue behind our teeth, or sometimes through our teeth, depending on how long your tongue is, and you just kind of give it a bit of a kick start. So you can do quite sharp tonguing, like that, which isn't very attractive, so we generally tone it down a bit. Unlike other brass instruments, we have our hand up the bell. So that's kind of a hangover from when it was a natural horn. That's how we used to change the notes. Nowadays, it just kind of keeps that sound, which they're all familiar with and we're all familiar with now. 
Um, it's a good way to hold it instead of like that. That looks a bit silly. So there are two main composers who spring to mind when I think about people who are excellent horn writers. The first from a while back is Mozart. He had a very good friend called Josef Leutgeb. Um, and he wrote four concertos for him, one of which was made very famous by Flanders and Swan, which goes a bit like this. Some important information about horn. It is a member of the brass family of instruments. Most performance opportunities include bands, orchestras, solos, and chamber music. Is typically not a jazz band instrument. Sound is produced by buzzing lips together with ear support. Most families would obtain a horn through either our school owned inventory or one of our approved local band music stores as a monthly rental. The ideal French horn student is confident, methodical, and academic. They can often work through problems and solutions on their own. Is outgoing, well-read, and often has multiple interests in multiple disciplines, like the three A's, academics, arts, and athletics. Has average or thinner lips, has basically an aligned jaw without a severe overbite or underbite. Can buzz and blow a fast, cool, steady airstream for an appropriate amount of time. Has a great ear that can hear different pitches and can hum or sing on pitch very well. In most usual cases, a horn student would be using a school owned instrument an approved brand of Holton, Kahn, Yamaha, or King. A student would own their own mouthpiece, a Holton Farkas MDC. The rest of this equipment is normally obtained in a care or maintenance kit altogether. That would include rotor and lever oil, some tuning slide grease, a mouthpiece cleaning brush, A cleaning snake for the inner part of the valve tubings, and a cleaning cloth. Some things to avoid when starting French horn as a beginner. Obtaining a scary brand instrument from a non-music specialized online source. Purchasing another brand or used horn without first consulting your band teacher. Beginning the instrument without first-hand instruction from your band teacher or an approved horn instructor. Attempting to remove slides or adjust strings that are attached to the back of the valves without being properly trained by your teacher. Attempting to use any other care or cleaning supplies and tools without being supervised by your teacher. Grabbing or lifting the instrument only by the bell area as it is thinner and more weak than the rest of the instrument. Not willing to practice patiently a small chunk of time daily. <laughs> 